Hey guys, it's Brianna. Just popping in here real quick as I'm editing this to say that I realized that the focus is slightly off during this entire video and hopefully it doesn't bug you. Luckily there's not much you really need to be seeing. It's just mostly like listening to the stuff that I'm saying. So if that bugs you, I totally understand if you're like, oh my god, I can't watch this. But hopefully it doesn't bug you too much. I just wanted to pop in here and say that I know that's a problem. I accidentally forgot to switch my camera from manual focus to autofocus during this video. So it is a teeny, teeny, teeny bit fuzzy, but hopefully it doesn't bother you too much. Okay, back to the video. My face is very unevenly sunburned. It's peeling. I'm due for a haircut. I'm wearing a t-shirt right now. I have no makeup on besides mascara. But you know what? We're here to talk about books, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna ignore all this that's going on right now and just focus on the books. I mean, I really look like a crazy person with my raccoon sunburn. Maybe don't go a whole weekend wearing the same sunglasses in the sun and not put enough sunblock on because you will end up with this. But we are here to talk about the books that I read in the month of June. June, I read four books and started a fifth, but I didn't finish it, so I'm gonna talk about the fifth one in my next book review video for the month of July. But we're gonna get started as we always do in order, starting with the first book that I read this month. Unfortunately, that means we're starting off with my least favorite book of the month and maybe my least favorite book of the year so far, which is saying a lot. And that was The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. If you watched um, my past book review videos, you would know that I read the first book in this series and I actually really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four out of five stars. However, the second book in the series just was really bad in my opinion. This book was published in 2007 and is 785 pages and that's a lot of pages to read of a bad book. So this took me forever to read because I was just not enjoying it. So you know when you're reading a book that you can't really get into, it takes you that much longer to get into it and actually read it? They did the impossible, ending the thousand year reign of the godlike Lord Ruler. Now, Vin, the former street urchin turned powerful Mistborn, and Ellen Venture, the idealistic young nobleman who loves her, must build a healthy new society in the ashes of an empire. As tensions grow in the wake of the uprising, an ancient legend seems to offer a glimpse of hope. But even if it really exists, no one knows where to find the Well of Ascension or what manner of power it bestows. It may just be that killing the Lord Ruler was the easy part. Surviving the aftermath of his fall is going to be the real challenge. Out of five, I would have to give this one star, and I honestly feel like that's being pretty generous. I feel like I should give it zero, but I'm going to give it one because I did enjoy the first book, and the only part of this book I enjoyed was probably like the last 100 pages which is saying a lot since it's almost 800 pages long. So that's why I'm giving it one star. It was just really long and drawn out, and the whole reason I liked the first book was because of the main character, and I felt like in this book, the main character kind of lost a lot of her sparkle in that like she was like this badass superhero in the first book, and then in the second book, she turned into like this girl who was so obsessed with like a boy's attention, and what she was wearing and stuff like that and just didn't feel like the same character. I found that this book came off like super sexist also, so that's something to be aware of. It just felt like a really dumbed down story and like I said, a whole bunch of nothing happens in like the first 600 pages and the good stuff doesn't come until the very end. And good stuff is being pretty generous. The only redeemable quality of this book is a character called Sazed. I really liked his character both in this book and the first book, but other than his character, I really didn't enjoy anything else from this book. Unfortunately, it is a three book series, and I do have the third book because I bought them in a set. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to read it yet. If I do, it probably won't be for a while because I was so happy to be done with this book and move on to something different. Normally, at this point in the video, I would tell you which types of people I would recommend this book to, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I think they should have stopped after the first book. Also, without giving him too much attention, uh, the author is kind of a jerk, which I found out in some of my research that I've done after reading this book and hating it so much. It's surprising because I found a lot of really great reviews on this book, 
Then there were a few people who kind of agreed with me that they hated it. Then I started reading some stuff about the author that I kind of didn't like. But we're not going to give him any more of our time, so let's move on to the second book that I read this month. The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dare. This book was so, so good and just what I needed after reading a really terrible book. This I absolutely loved. This book was actually published this year in 2020. Um, in February, so it's been out for a couple months. It is 384 pages and I find that books between the like three and 400 page count are usually like the perfect length, so this would fall into that category. Let me read you the description. Adani is a 14 year old Nigerian girl who knows what she wants in education. The only daughter of a broke father, she is a valuable commodity. Removed from school and sold as a third wife to an old man, Adani finds that her life amounts to this. Four goats, two bags of rice, some chickens, and a new TV. When unspeakable tragedy swiftly strikes in her new home, she is secretly sold as a domestic servant to a household in the wealthy enclaves of Lagos, where no one will talk about the strange disappearance of her predecessor, Rebecca. No one but Adani. As a yielding daughter, a subservient wife, and a power powerless servant, Adani is repeatedly told that she is nothing, but Adani won't be silenced. She is determined to find her voice in a whisper, in song, in broken English, until she can speak for herself, for the girls like Rebecca who came before, and for all the girls who will follow. Featuring a remarkable, unforgettable heroine, Abby Dare's incredible debut novel is a heartbreaking coming-of-age story that vividly captures a young woman's courageous struggle for the right to choose her own future. I would give this book five stars. This was one of my favorite books that I read this month and maybe even this entire year. My favorite part was that it was written in the voice of a Nigerian girl named Adani and it was done so well. Just capturing her voice, her accent, her literacy level was done super well in this book without making it confusing to read. I really like books that are from perspectives that I don't hear very often, so that was a super nice touch. The story was simultaneously inspiring and heartbreaking. It's definitely one of those ones that pulls at your heartstrings a little bit, but also makes you like really feel for the character. I honestly couldn't put it down. I think I read it in like three days total, so I flew through it super quick. I honestly would recommend this book for anybody who's looking for something to read, um, but specifically people who like stories that are from perspectives that they don't typically hear, and also stories that are set outside of the US. This one is set in Nigeria, so super interesting. The next book that I read was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste NG. I don't have the copy of it with me because I lent it to somebody else, which just shows how much I liked the book. It was published in 2017 and is 338 pages, so again, right in that sweet spot of like perfect length books. I will read you the description off Goodreads since I don't have the book with me. In Shaker Heights, a placid, progressive su suburb of Cleveland, everything is planned. From the layout of the winding roads to the colors of the houses to the successful lives its residents will go on to lead. And no one embodies this spirit more than Elena Richardson, whose guiding principle is playing by the rules. Enter Mia Warren, an enigmatic artist and single mother who arrives in this idyllic bubble with her teenage daughter, Pearl, and rents a house from the Richardsons. Soon, Mia and Pearl become more than tenants. Tenants. All four Richardson children are drawn to the mother-daughter pair. But Mia carries with her a mysterious past and a disregard for the status quo that threatens to upend this carefully ordered community. When old family friends of the Richardsons attempt to adopt the Chinese-American baby, a custody battle erupts that dramatically divides the town and puts Mia and Elena on opposing sides. Suspicious of Mia and her motives, Elena is determined to uncover the secrets in Mia's past, but her obsession will come at unexpected and devastating costs. Out of five stars, I gave this book four. The only reason I docked down one is because it took me like 100 pages to really get into it. There was a lot of setup that I kind of felt was unnecessary. There are a lot of characters in the book, so I understand why the author felt like they needed to set it up so descriptively, but at the same time, it kind of kicked me out of the story a little bit because I wasn't able to you know, get hooked right at the beginning. But once I did, I really enjoyed it and I read it super quickly. Again, like I said, it's a super quick read and it's something that you will enjoy if you like 
really engaging stories with lots of characters and a lot of intertwining storylines that kind of connect them all in weird ways. Personally, I think the characters were the best part of the story. The plot was really great, but the characters really made the story. I would recommend this book to anybody who likes a drama, specifically family and class drama, and also anybody who has an interest in art or photography because there was a lot of talk about photography and art as one of the characters is a photographer, and there's also a scene I think where they go to like an art museum. So there's a lot of references to artists. And the last book that I read this month is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This book was recommended to me by a lot of different people. Um, a lot of my coworkers have read this book, a couple of my friends have read this book, and most of them have enjoyed it. It was published in 2017 and is 325 pages. Again, hits that sweet spot of like perfect page count. I will read you the description. No one's ever told Eleanor that life should be better than fine. Meet Eleanor Oliphant. She struggles with appropriate social skills and tends to say exactly what she's thinking. Nothing is missing in her carefully timetabled life where weekends mostly consist of frozen pizza, vodka, and phone chats with mummy. But everything changes when Eleanor meets Raymond, the bumbling IT guy from her office, whose big heart will ultimately help Eleanor find the way to repair her own profoundly damaged one. Smart, warm, and uplifting, Ele Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine as the story of an out-of-the-ordinary heroine whose deadpan weirdness and wit make for an irresistible journey as she realizes the only way to survive is to open your heart. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. I docked it down one star because I found that the narrator was a little bit difficult to get into. The voice was a little bit, a little tough in the beginning. Um, you kind of have to read it to understand what I mean, but the author tries really hard to convey that Eleanor, the narrator, struggles with her social skills, and she writes in such a way that I feel like nobody thinks. What I mean by that is like, I think that the narration she's doing isn't the way someone who is socially challenged would actually think, if that makes sense. Like, I think she, she almost played up the socially awkward voice too much. But once I was able to get past that and really get into the story, I did enjoy this book a lot. It touches a lot on mental illness, which I think is sometimes difficult to capture in books. And the story was really compelling and interesting. I found myself wanting to know more about Eleanor as I read. And I did find her to be a likable character, which I'm not sure if that was the author's aim, but I found her to be likable, so I think that's why I was able to get so into it. I would recommend this book to anybody who's looking for a quick read, anyone who's looking for something that's super popular, because this was super popular. I was recommended it by a lot of people, and also anybody who's interested in reading a story that centers around mental illness and personal trauma. It's one of those books where you're kind of unpacking someone's baggage as the story goes on. So you're learning more about Eleanor's past as she is throughout the journey in this novel. And those are all the books that I read for the month of June. Just a sneak peek, I started this one in June as well, but I didn't finish it until July. So this will be in next month's book review video, so look out for Educated by Tara Westover in the next video. But that's gonna do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you leave your book recommendations down in the comments below, and I will add them to my list. And I hope you enjoyed. I will talk to you next time. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye!